Hello there, I've been tanking since about midway through patch 820, so quite a while now. I started out raid tanking before branching out into Mythic Plus. It's fair to say I was a pretty terrible tank at first, especially in Mythic Plus, not least because I found it's actually quite hard to find much beginner level information on tanking. Don't get me wrong, there are a ton of good raid and Mythic Plus guides out there, but most of them are aimed at experienced tanks, and those few that do try to aim at absolute beginners often, in my opinion, still assume a little bit too much knowledge. So in this video, I thought I'd run through all the things I know now, but I wish I'd have known back when I started. Added in with a few things that I've noticed a lot of people who are new to tanking sometimes struggle with. If you're an experienced tank, even just as an off-spec, then this video probably isn't going to tell you anything that you don't already know. But if you've thought about tanking, but have been too nervous to give it a try, or if you've previously been frustrated by guides telling you that tanking's all about knowing the fight, then hopefully you'll get something useful out of this. While there are some basics of tanking that do cross over all types of content, Raiding in dungeons, especially Mystic Plus, requires significantly different approaches, so I'll be splitting much of this guide into those two major sections. You can use the chapter headings to navigate through things. Let's start off with the very basics of tanking. The most important job of a tank is to not die and to make sure that the enemies are attacking you at all time. As a general rule, DPS and especially healers don't survive very long in group content in World of Warcraft if they take direct melee hits from bosses and major trash. The good news is that Blizzard have made both of those key jobs incredibly easy for tank specialisations. As a tank, we have a much bigger health pool, meaning that hits that can one-shot other roles will, assuming we're topped up, probably just give our healer a bit of a fright. But that's not all. As tanks, we have a bunch of passive damage reduction that's designed to allow us to just stand there all day and take all of the worst melee hits that our enemies can throw at us. As a rule of thumb, you can expect to take half, if not less, of the damage that the other roles will take. One cool thing about that is that a lot of the mechanics that are aimed at DPS or healers, we can just shrug off. Those swirlies in the ground are often of little consequence to us. Where it starts to get a little more interesting is in active mitigation. Now, as a beginner's guide, explaining every tank spec in detail is a bit beyond the scope of this video, but at a high level, every class has some kind of rotational active mitigation. Paladins have Shield of the Righteous that increases their armor, and Word of Glory, which is a big self-heal. Druids have things like Iron Fur and Frenzied Regeneration. And the first step towards tanking is learning how to weave your active mitigations into your rotation. There's really no need to overthink this aspect. For the most part, you just want to keep your damage reductions up as much as you possibly can and learn to use any self-heals you have when you need them. Now, one big rookie error is to be too hesitant to use things like your self-heals. Yes, they can be more impactful if your health is low, but if you aren't taking a lot of big hits, using them in cooldown will still save your healers a lot of stress. And as a tank, you really want to be your healer's best friend. Now, I will say that Brewmaster Monk is a bit different to these principles as its main act of mitigation is to turn big damage into a dot over time, effectively smoothing the damage out and making it easier to heal through. This does make Brewmaster a bit more challenging to learn for a beginner, and my advice is that if you're new to tanking, you probably want to pick up a class like Druid or Paladin over Brewmaster Monk. Along with rotational mitigation, just as DPS get their burst damage cooldowns, tanks get big damage reduction cooldowns. These do vary from tank to tank, but usually offer massive damage reduction for a period of time, things like cheat death mechanics and emergency button heals. Now, much is often said about you having to know when to use these, but honestly, in normal raiding and lower, think sub mythic plus six keys, there's rarely anything that hits you so hard that you absolutely need to use those cooldowns at a certain time. So in many cases, I personally just advocate using them when you have them in cooldown. Trust me, if you don't need them for anything specific, then your healer will thank you if you use them as much as you can. One of the biggest mistakes to make as a tank is to have less uptime on your cooldowns by being hesitant to use them. 
Once you get into heroic raiding and higher keys, you will find that you'll start to need these cooldowns to deal with specific mechanics. But even in those particular difficulties, that won't be all the time. For example, in heroic raids, it's maybe only just two or three of the boss fights that will require you to use your cooldowns just to survive. The best way to learn when and how to use your big cooldown strategically is honestly to just do the fight. Watch for those occasions where you're losing 90 or 100% of your health and then next time you do the fight, use your cooldowns at that point. The last basic step to tanking is positioning. Now, I'll come round to positioning around mechanics later on in this video, but as a general rule, you want to try and face your enemies away from the rest of your group. As you become familiar with fights, you will discover which enemies have frontals that you need to keep away from your group and which just single target you and then just the positioning doesn't matter. One bit of advice is that if your group insists on standing on you and eating your frontals, that is on them. Constantly swiveling about trying to avoid a rogue demon hunter will just end up killing you or your healer. So if somebody is insisting and standing there and eating those frontals and dying, don't let them bully you into thinking it's your fault. Now one very important rule as a tank is to avoid turning your back to your enemies. A lot of your passage damage reduction comes from mechanics like parry, which only work when you're facing the source. Letting enemies get behind you can result in two to three times more damage, which can easily turn hits into one shots. This does make movement a bit of an art form as a tank. If you can avoid moving, my advice is to don't move. But when you do move, you want to try and strafe, sidestep or back away from your enemies. If you're not used to this style of movement, it can be quite challenging to learn. So it's well worth practicing a lot if you want to tank. If all else fails, when you're moving, you can use a movement ability to get out of range for your enemies for a brief period of time. Another tip is that when you do sidestep, it actually slightly increases the chance of an enemy's physical melee attack to miss you, meaning that small stutter step movements can effectively act like a small physical damage reduction. Now, let's move on to threat and aggro. Aggro is basically when an NPC focuses all its attention on you. You obtain aggro by building threat. Threat is generated by doing damage, or for healers, by healing an NPC's targets. The more damage you do, the more threat an NPC will attack whoever tops the threat table. As we tanks do less damage than DPS, we get a very large passive buff to our threat generation. In most cases, that buff is all that is needed. As long as you're hitting an enemy first, it will latch on to you and stay with you all the time. And most of the time, honestly, you don't even need to think about threat. Just do damage and everything goes fine. Where it can become an issue is if your DPS are a lot more geared than you, or if you have somebody in your group with a really big burst trinket. The good players know this and will hold back from doing damage to allow you time to build threat. But the less good ones, well, let's just say watching a mini boss chase them around the room can be pretty funny, even if it really annoys them. And that's where the taunt comes in. Your taunt is an ability that will override the NPC's threat and force them to aggro onto you for three seconds regardless. What taunt does is that for that three seconds, it boosts your threat level to exceed any of the other people attacking the NPC. Once that times out, your threat level will decay back down to where your natural threat level is, so it does not relieve you of the need to do damage to your enemies. Now, one very important thing about taunting is to remember that it does nothing if you already have max threat. But using it in those circumstances will put it on cooldown, which can be an issue if you then lose threat when you need it. So as a general rule, my advice is to always try to pull your enemies by using damage, not using a taunt. And to only use the taunt to recover aggro if you lose it, or if you need to take aggro from another tank. And I'll come back to that subject in the raid section. Like all rules, this was one that is made to be broken. There are going to be cases where it will make sense to pull with a taunt. Usually when you don't have a single target damage ability to hand or in raiding, if it's really super important that you're the tank who gets aggro first instead of your co-tank. And that's really all there is to it, the basic tanking. 
It really is that simple. Just go out, do damage to your enemies, and profit. So let's get on to raiding. One common refrain from raid tanks is that it's a bit boring. Now, I personally don't fully agree with that, but I do get where that sentiment comes from. Very few of the raid mechanics that DPS and healers have to deal with are relevant to tanks. As a general rule, we get our own mechanics to deal with, and there's usually a lot less of them to worry about. Lucky us. So what about those tank mechanics? Well, raid tanking is mostly all about taunt swamping and positioning. Taunt swapping, basically Blizzard likes to force the tanks to regularly swap which tank is taking the lead with the boss. To try to keep things interesting, they usually change the way they do that from boss to boss. Now, the most common tank swap mechanic is to give the active tank a stacking debuff. That can be a dot or it can be just an increased damage taken debuff or more rarely they'll do something like if you get to 10 stacks then you die type deal. With this mechanic basically the tanks swap whenever their debuff drops off. On pool usually one tank will take the boss until they rack up a certain number of stacks. How many? The best way to find that out is to get a good boss guide for your raid. Pretty much all the boss guides will tell you what the recommended number of stacks to swap in a boss is. This does mean that you will need a way to see the sta your co-tank stacks. You should have your raid frames configured so that you can see your co-tank's debuff. And there's also weak orders that will do this for you. I personally use the weak order packs by a developer called Cozy. I'll link to their profiles down in the description so that you can find them. Boss mod add-ons like DBM and Big Wigs can tell you when to swap too, but in my experience, they're not always 100% reliable. Often that's because the right way to swap changes over the duration of a raid tier and the boss swords don't always get updated. And generally, while they can be a good helper, it's important, I think, to understand why you're swapping and how to judge it for yourself for those days when the boss mod just isn't working for you. Now, in higher difficulties like Heroic and above, this mechanic will usually mean that you'll want to be using your big damage reduction cooldowns just before you hit your max stacks, as that tends to be when the damage peaks and when you'll be getting the max damage input and become most in risk of dying. Another mechanic you'll see at least once per raid is what I would call the reaction time test. There's a couple of ways Blizzard does this. One is the tank combo, which will be where the boss will do three casts using two abilities, i.e. it will cast one ability twice and the other one once, and the tank will get one shot if it gets hit by two of the same abilities. What this means is that you'll have to watch the casts going out and taunt at the right moment, which is when you see one of those abilities go out for a second time. The other alternative approach that they sometimes use is you get a stacking debuff followed by a cast. And in this case, your co-tank has to taunt before the cast ends. If you have a cheat death-based cooldown, it is worth using it when your tank is due to swap. I find that these swaps are the most punishing mechanics to execute for tanks and even the best tanks will mess it up occasionally. So if you have a way to survive through a mistake, it's a good time to use it. Now the third and easiest swap mechanic is where you simply have to taunt after a major tank buster cast goes onto your co-tank. With this, you just watch for the boss doing the cast and then you taunt. Now one tip. For 95% of these casts, the boss will not switch to you if you taunt mid-cast. This means that with mechanics like this, you can usually taunt during the cast, and that will reduce the damage your co-tank takes by causing the boss to swap the instant the cast finishes. It's usually not a massive deal if you're late, but it will save your healers some mana. But what about the 5% of mechanics that don't work that way? Well, that's usually the mechanics where you want the boss to swap to you instantly even during the cast. So generally, you don't need to really worry about that 5%. In almost all cases, when you're doing a tank swap mechanic based on a boss's cast, you want to try and taunt before the cast finishes. Lastly for raid tanking is positioning. I would say that for 80% of the fights, positioning doesn't matter. You'll just fight the boss where he's standing. 
But sometimes you will need to think about how you position the boss. Often it will be near the edge of an encounter area or you have to face the boss in a specific way. Now, if you're in an organized group, this is really easy to do. You just let your raid leader tell you where they want you to go. If it's a pug, you might well find that the group will look to you to know how to position it. In pug raiding, the raiding scene very much tends to just get this is the standard way to do it and we expect all the tanks to just know to do it that way. This can be a real pain if you're new to tanking. If you're unsure, what you can often do is let your co-tank take the lead. But it is advisable to check a guide before you go into these raid encounters just in case you get an inexperienced co-tank and you're going to have to help them even if you're not super familiar with the fight. My advice is that if you can, the best place to learn raid tanking is in an organized group like a guild group. If the group knows you, they're going to be a lot more tolerant of mistakes and generally more willing to help you, for example, by showing you where to stand. Now, I do know that that's not an option for everyone, but learning raid tanking just by pugging is really going to make it a lot harder. And if you do have to learn the raid by pugging, I personally recommend going into a few raids as a DPS and watching what the tanks do with the bosses just to get some tips. Don't be afraid if you're in a guild to let, ask your guild to let you tank their alt raid. Even if they have well established tanks, you'll often find those tanks may well fancy a little bit of a break and most good guilds are smart enough to know that it's a good idea to have a few folks in the team who are able to step in and tank if they're short of one of their main tanks and most of them will be very glad to encourage it even if it means a bit of a bumpy evening for them raid wise. Now before I move on to talking about Mythic Plus, as a general rule in LFR and normal raiding you're not really going to need to use your major cooldowns and so you'll just be using them at will to reduce the load on your healers. But in Heroic and especially Mythic Radiant, you will find yourself taking very large damage hits, usually in and around the tank swaps. The goal in those difficulties is for watch for when this has happened and try and figure out where the damage is coming from. Usually, honestly, it's pretty obvious. And then try to plan to rotate your cooldowns for those big hits. Now, generally, I use the shorter duration, weaker cooldowns first because that's when the healers are under less pressure and then the bigger ones during the times when the shorter ones aren't available. There is in most fights going to be times where you have no cooldown available and where you just have to hope that your healers are on the ball. Now if you're in voice comms and your group's very organised you can ask for an external damage reduction when this happens. In Mythic Radiant this is often essential. But in lower level raids, honestly asking for external damage reductions will just confuse a lot of the groups who aren't used to thinking about DPS or healers mitigating their tank damage. Okay, well let's get on to Mythic Plus, which is a whole different ball game. Now, a lot of what I'm about to say is applicable to other dungeon difficulties as well. But I'm going to be concentrating on Mythic Plus because that's where all the interest and all the difficulty lies. As the lone tank, it's now all going to be on you. The one bit of good news is that instead of tracking a co-tank's debuffs, now you're having to track your group's damage and your healer's mana. Probably the biggest challenge in dungeons is that your group will look to you to lead the way. Even in an organized group, the group leader will immediately defer to you. You will be setting the pace of the dungeon and deciding what gets pulled and when and so on. And that can be a very heavy burden. There's no two ways about it. For dungeons up to Mythic Zero, it's actually not such a big deal. The hardest bit there is navigating the interior of an unfamiliar dungeon. Trust me, you will get very good at reading the in-game map pretty quickly. In these dungeons, the aim generally is to try and find a path through the dungeon that minimizes the amount of trash you have to pull. That's if you're given a choice, of course. With the recent introduction of follower dungeons, you now have the option of doing the runs with NPCs. You can even let them tank for you and see what they do. Just keep in mind that their routes are probably fine up to Mythic Zero, but they will not be optimized for Mythic Plus. In Mythic Plus, it's a bit of a different ball game, as there's a minimum trash count that you will need and the timer adds a need to try and be efficient in how you complete that trash count. Figuring out routing can be a challenge. There's two main ways to do it. 
One way is to run the dungeon as the DPS and learn from the tanks doing it, or you can find a guide. In game, there is an add-on called MDT that allows you to plan your routes and figure out trash counts, but I personally find that opening that up mid-run is a bit of a pain. So if you have two monitors, I recommend the website keystone.guru. This allows you to view a route on a second monitor. The site also has community supplied routes. So if you don't fancy working out your routes for yourself, you can find lots of pre-canned routes that you can follow. Raider.io also has a weekly route page which offers basic pug friendly routes. Now, one major piece of advice when it comes to routing if you're pugging Mythic Plus is to be open to learning from your groups. Plugs, especially at the lower and mid levels, tend to land on one or two one true routes. And I found that if you see the rest of your group wander off a bit, following them and adjusting the route to meet their expectations often works out very well. Mechanically, once you have the routing sorted out, the rest is pretty straightforward. It takes a little bit of time and experience to judge how many ads to pull at the same time, but the TLDR there is if everybody dies, you probably overpulled, and if the group's health barely moves at all, you really should be pulling bigger. Chain pulling is a great tool to speed things up. If you pull, say for example, six ads, once there's maybe only two or three left, you can probably pull the next pack in, assuming that is that your healer isn't struggling. On the subject of healers, in Mythic Plus, it's very important to learn to track your healer's mana. Pulling a boss or a large trash pack when they're at 5 or 10% mana probably isn't going to end well for anyone. In very high keys or at the start of a season, healers can struggle a bit with mana and you can expect to need to pause from time to time to let them have a drink. Now the truth is that some healers are better at managing mana than others, so don't assume because it wasn't an issue in your last 10 runs that it's not going to be an issue this time around. Waiting does cost a little bit of time in that timer, but it's going to be a lot less time lost than running back from the entrance if a pool turns into a wipe. Boss mechanics and dungeons are, for tanks, usually pretty simplistic. Oftentimes, you just have to stand there and use your cooldowns occasionally. Now, most siegeants will have one or two dungeons where the bosses do have tank busters and you will need to learn to use your cooldowns in those situations. And you're also going to get the odd boss that has a weird mechanic like the frog in Halls of Effusion where you need to know to stay inside the green ring that goes around the boss. Those are just things that honestly I find you pick up quite quickly when you're doing those dungeons. The last tip is how to handle rogue groups. If you pug, you're eventually going to meet the group where there's a DPS who will insist in pulling even if they don't know how or when to pull. Most taunts a single target, so unless they're a hunter or rogue with a misdirect, you might well find yourself desperately trying to get threat before they die. The important thing to know is that if that is happening, that is on them. It is possible for a skilled DPS to successfully pull for their tanks, and that is a feature of higher level play, but it's always communicated within the group on voice terms. If you see someone pulling for you and it's going well, honestly, I would say go with the flow. But if it turns into an absolute mess, then the odds of you finishing that key is low. Just know that that is down to them and not down to you. As a tank, you will get the blame, just as healers sometimes do. And sometimes it even will be your fault. So do learn to know when you're making mistakes and correct them. But just because a DBS that is pulling everything is saying that it's all your fault, that does not make it so. And in a group where one or two DPS are doing half your damage, the reason that the time is being missed is their lack of DPS, not you pulling too slow. Big pulls in a low DPS group only ends one way, and that way is running back from the entrance after wipes a lot. If you do pug in Mythic Plus, you are going to need a thick skin. Honestly, in my experience, most groups are actually really nice. The toxic ones are very rare, but when you do encounter one, and you will, you will tend to remember them more. Sometimes you will get that person or even that group that will try to deflect blame for their own failures onto you or the healer. Just keep in mind, there's no point trying to reason with unreasonable people and don't let it get you down.
But at the same time, even the best tanks do make mistakes. And sometimes one mistake throws you so much that you go on to make an absolute mess of a run. Do keep in mind that sometimes it went badly because it was you. And make sure that you learn from those sometimes. That way you'll be sure to do better next time. Depleting the key sucks, but it is just a video game. Next time you time that run, trust me, it'll be well worth it. Well, that's all that I have. Have you tanked much yet? Do you have any tips or trips you want to share? Let us all know in the comments down below. And if you found this video even vaguely useful, do let me and the YouTube algorithm know by hitting that like button. There's going to be plenty more guides, opinions and news from me soon. If you want to get notified whenever I go live, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. Subscribing is by far the best way to support a new channel like mine. That's all for now. I'll be back with another video real soon.